Hey everybody, Greg here, and I wanted to tell you about a scam that's going around right now, and I guess I would describe it as a OneDrive uh, fake document login scam, and it comes by email. So I'm going to walk you through these screenshots. These are from someone who contacted me since I'm in you know IT. They asked me questions, and and this was one of the questions I had uh, recently. So um, somebody said that they heard from others that, that they've been sending out this email that they weren't sending out. So that's essentially how you would find out that your account has been hacked and is being used for this nefarious activity. So step one is um, the you know person, you, you let's say, you would be receiving an email, and I'm going to bring this to the center here. Um, ignore this at the top, it's just a screenshot. So what you're looking at is here it would say from, and I've you know, covered that out for privacy, right? So, but it would say from someone, and it's somebody you know, somebody that you've heard from before that's in your address book. And so you're not going to be concerned when you get this email initially. Um, subject is new proposal. Sounds legitimate. Uh, Citrix attachments expires April 5th. So it seems like it's timely. And we scroll down and then um, we see that there are these two PDF files and download attachments. So that sounds legitimate. And there are services like Dropbox and um, Box.com and you know Microsoft OneDrive, etc., that use these links that let you download documents. So so far so good. You wouldn't be too concerned. I'm going to move that out of the way, and I I want to show you a practice or technique that um, is helpful, and that is. If you have links in an email, whether it's a button or any other kind of link, um, it's good to hover your mouse over that and see what the link, it'll be revealed there, see where that button or link is going to take you. So in this case, we see HTTPS, um, you know, and the address 1drv.ms. Well, that's a legitimate OneDrive link. So up to this point, we wouldn't be too concerned. So I'm going to move that out of the way and we'll move to the next item. Um, so let's say we click on that link. We are going to end up at, here let me bring this window over. Um, here we go. We would end up at a web page like this one. And um, you can see the address here at the top. It says OneDrive live.com. So that's a legitimate address. All the things that I would tell people to check uh, so far seem okay. And then there's a message here, which is kind of tiny. So I'm going to bring in a zoomed in version of it. So essentially here it's saying, you have an incoming file in Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, a contact in your address book has sent you an encrypted file, which you already know because you got this email. And up to this point, your antivirus software or anti-phishing software might not even detect a problem because all you're doing right now is looking at a PDF file that's in a Microsoft OneDrive folder that's been shared with you. So um, you know, this is how people get into trouble. There's so many of these things that aren't necessarily a virus or they're not going to look like they're a scam and people just start clicking on stuff and and so anyway, so let's assume you go ahead and you clicked on that button that says access file. Well, that's where the troubles are going to begin. So I'm going to show you with the mouse hovered over the access file button, down here we get the address where that file is. And it says hyk.com.pk and then forward slash wp hyphen includes forward slash. So it's a WordPress website. You might not know that, but people that know WordPress would be familiar with that. So um, that should be a tip-off right there that this claims to be a Microsoft OneDrive file, and yet the link is taking us to some WordPress file. That, but, but at this point, you've already been through several layers of trust building, essentially, so you're probably not going to have your guard up as much, right? Okay, so Let's say you click on that access file button. Now, the first page I'm going to show you is what many people would see if their computer was not alerting them to possible phishing. 
So basically, at this point, the last step is it's just saying sign into Microsoft. And there's the Microsoft logo, and you've probably seen this many times. Um, it's, it's just a standard Microsoft login, except for the fact if we go up to the top of the page, we're not at OneDrive. We're not at Microsoft. We're at hyk.com.pk something. So that right there would be your tip off. But like I say, the trust has been built up to this point, so you're less likely to pay attention. Now, let me show you what some browsers might do. They might come up and say with a message, are you sure you want to visit this site? You know, is it, this might not be legitimate. And they kind of give you a little bit of a warning. So hopefully folks that have software or have the smart screen turned on in Windows would see that alert and might think twice about it. But if you don't, if you just say, oh yeah, this is, I know it's from my friend and everything's fine, then you click OK and then you log in, well, then you've basically given your email address and your essentially your login for Microsoft and your password to these people. And then what they're going to do is immediately log into your email account, your Microsoft account, and they're going to contact, well, probably change your password right away so you can't get into your account. And then they're going to send an email out to all of your friends that looks exactly like the one that we started out with here, the message talking about, you know, somebody wants to share a file with you, and now your friends are going to get this from your account, you know, and the cycle starts over. And so, you know, when you've heard about these situations where, you know, Facebook had accounts compromised or um, Yahoo, I think, also had a similarly huge number of accounts compromised. This is how that happens. So it's, it's not that a computer got hacked into. It's not that somebody got into the mainframe, you know. Um, I mean, th those things do happen. But more likely, the easiest thing for the hackers to do is just to send you a little email and essentially get your login information directly from you and have you type it in for them. Um, and you can imagine as this grows quickly, as they get hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands of logins, within a few days this can spread like wildfire uh, pretty rapidly. And, and the thing is, most antivirus software is not going to block Microsoft OneDrive. Now I did find, uh, I'm going to bring this up because I think you'll find it of interest, I ran a scan of the initial link. So for the initial link, which was that OneDrive, onedrv.ms link, um, there were no problems identified, and, and that's scanning, you know, 69 different uh, website scanners. So that's troubling. That means there are a lot of, you know, services out there that would not have identified that initial link as a problem. However, um, there is this result, which um, essentially identifies that the site has been blacklisted by a service called Fish Tank. And uh, the scan here is for website owners. So, you know, if, if somebody had their own website infected, they could scan it, they'd see this information, and then it would say, your site is blacklisted and needs immediate attention. Because sometimes there can be a legitimate WordPress website or other site, uh, regardless of the CMS or, or HTML used, um, there can be these legitimate websites that have a malicious page that's been injected on the site without the owner being aware of that. So that's why there are these scan services for website owners. But anyway, uh, you'll see it says no malware found. There wasn't particularly malware, but they're scanning the OneDrive and this particular address. So somebody has probably reported this to the fish tank service. I'm not familiar with that one, but there's some of these that are crowdsourced, you know, so, uh, and that's how they would have found out about it. And then if you had the fish tank software, presumably then it could alert you and say, hey, this looks like a, you know, a scam. So uh, anyway, but how it all begins is an email from somebody you know and trust with something that looks legitimate. They're building trust along the way, sending you to Microsoft initially and then uh, hoping to get your account info. So as long as you, um, maybe you received an email like that and you just ignored it or put it in trash, or maybe it was automatically put into trash for you because it was suspicious, 
then you don't have to worry about that. If you clicked and got as far as the Microsoft um, OneDrive page, but then you didn't go any further, you didn't provide your login and password, then you're probably okay there because you were just essentially on a legitimate uh, Microsoft site. But if you did go to this login page and you tried to log in and then it probably said something like, oh, there was an error, you know. Um, but then if, if that's what happened, then you really need to go in there, change your Microsoft password, check around in your account details, make sure that your contact phone number wasn't changed to somewhere else in the world. And similarly, make sure your contact email address is the correct one. You might want to go through the questions, uh, the security questions, make sure those haven't been changed. And um, then if, if you've done that, you should be in pretty good shape. And then you'll, if this did happen to you, you know, if your account has been compromised, you would want to um, contact the people in your contacts list and say, hey, I don't know if you've received something from me or not, but it's a scam. I hope you didn't um, you know, click on anything. If you did, you can kind of give them the short version of this video, which is essentially change your password and, you know, if, if you clicked on something. Um, or you can send them to this video if you want. And uh, anyway, I hope that this uh, information has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, if you're on YouTube, you can just kind of leave comments below, and I try to be pretty prompt about answering those. Uh, if this is on my website, you can contact me through there. I avoid putting my contact information directly out there just in case, you know, if a video goes viral, I don't want to have to deal with, uh, you know, 100,000 emails tomorrow morning. But um, anyway, I do appreciate all the, uh, the views and the likes and the, the follows on YouTube. Really appreciate that. Let me know also if you have any other suggestions for new videos or any other questions. So thanks again. Take care.